the Ayrshire Derby doesn't happen that often these days, and to have one at Hamden, well, that was something special. And I was at the draw with the gaffer, and they picked up uh, air. I was always like happy, but at the same time, a little bit under pressure because I know that was maybe the biggest derby in uh, the uh, club history and you know, like the Ayrshire community. It's a huge occasion for everyone who's interested in football in Ayrshire and further afield when we, we draw air in a cup competition. A few of the lads, uh, the likes of James Fowler, uh, Gary Hay, people like that were saying, you know, we'd love to get air, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big derby. And, I think a few of us lads were thinking, well, I've never heard of the Ayrshire Derby. Playing down in Kilmarnock every week, you, you know, you're not really too aware of Air being there because, you know, they're two, uh, they're, uh, two, div two divisions below us. And, um, you know, Air fans just seem to come out of nowhere. We, you know, we didn't know they existed. I preferred, personally, to get Air United so that we could have the atmosphere of a big Ayrshire Derby and I know the rivalry that exists between the two clubs. It's uh, Ayrshire's... El Clásico, uh, bigger than Real Madrid against Barcelona for the football aficionados of Ayrshire. We were always told about it uh, when, you, when we first arrived, and uh, but we weren't quite aware of how big it was and how um, fierce it was. We had a lot of fans who were saying this, as long as you beat Ayr, it doesn't matter what happens the rest of the season. Um, so there was, there was a massive expectation. You only realise what means these people when, when you're around like the week before, the match, people like uh, uh, stopping you around the town. Come on, like we cannot lose this match. Uh, uh, was uh, yeah, was a little bit of pressure. We got them in the semi-finals, and for me personally, it felt like a final. And I think if you asked any of the fans from both sets of supporters, it was it was it was the final, so to speak. Um, and it was just such a such a massive massive occasion for for everybody. It maybe only comes round once, maybe every two or three years, if you get them in a cup competition. Eh, and it, it kind of means that the bragging rights are, are there for, for a while. Eh, so we had to make sure that, that we got the victory. And I felt a certain amount of pressure uh, inside myself that because it was so important to the people of Kilmarnock, um, that we had to deliver. It was very, very important. And we set about it in that in that manner and we treated Air United with the utmost respect. I've watched them I watched them every two or three weeks when I get an opportunity because I so much wanted to get this football club to a League Cup final. There could have been uh, nothing worse for Kilmarnock than to lose to Air in a match like that of such importance and in such a big stage and where we were expected to win because we were the SPL club. You know on the day it was, it was, it was incredible. We, remember we stayed in the hotel the night before and when we were looking out the window and, and they seemed to be coming out from everywhere, Kilmarnock fans, you know, they were, we couldn't believe the amount of people that, um, and the amount of interest that was in the game, you know, and um, we were made well aware before the game of how much it meant to the people around Kilmarnock. It was an eye-opener for me to see the, the passion and, um, you know, within the fans down here and, um, you know, the crowds that day at Hamden were, were tremendous, as I said, there was people here cheering us on the way out of the hotel, you know, um, for that game, so, um, I definitely, I definitely won't forget the, the first Ayrshire Derby I played in, that's for sure. It was obviously a really nice stadium. Uh, it wasn't fully, like, full, fully full on the semi-final, but I think because of the rivalry, you know, you could sort of, you could hear, it was great atmosphere and just everyone was looking forward to it from the minute we stepped out for the warm-up. This may not be the old firm, it may not be the Edinburgh Derby, but make no mistake, this is a derby that matters and all the more so this afternoon with a place in the final of the Scottish Communities League Cup back here in Hamden at stake. And so for a few hours, the National Stadium becomes a little corner of Ayrshire as these teams meet for the first time in a major semi-final. It's probably as nervous as I've ever been, I think, uh, playing a game like even during it, you know, because I was desperate for us, so desperate for us to win the game. and. And I just knew how much it meant to to everybody that was watching us in the Kilmarnock end, and me myself being a Kilmarnock fan, it was I knew what it meant to the club, and uh, I was just desperate to win that semi final. We thought that they would come and try and win the game. They would, in a one off occasion, we thought they would come and make a right go uh, at trying to win the game, um, which wasn't the case. Uh, they didn't want to win the game. They just came. They sat in, defended. Um, 
when they got the ball, they kicked it over the halfway line and waited for us to to come back at them. Um, it was quite a bizarre situation, and uh, eventually, um, I think they they might regret that. Pay for Shields. Again, quickly closed down a loose ball. And the first division size fans who have travelled in their thousands make themselves heard at the National Stadium. Dayton for for. Gary Hay trying to turn away from Smith, he's done well here. It's over the goalkeeper. Great defending by John Robertson. Nielsen. It's about coming forward now. James Dayton. Oh, he skipped by Eddie Malone. James Dayton now picks the cross out, heading clear by John Robertson. Here United try to press it. There's he with a shot, comfortably taken by the Air United keeper. I was very frustrated being being back at the other end when all the players up at the, the far side and and their goalie was having a great game. Um, and you just started to think the longer the game went on, is this going to be our day? Back for Kelly. Shoes the step over. Heffernan got lucky in almost a second time with the deflection. Their keeper had and it's one of those days where he'll probably never play as well as that again. Here's Dayton, he might be the man to unpick the lock. He's threatened, he goes for goal, beaten away, there's Harkins, great save, Cuthbert! Still a danger, not clear, Harkins can't bring it under control. Oh, what a save by Kevin Cuthbert to deny, first of all, James Dayton. Powerful effort, beaten away, and then it looked like Harkins would score, and he just stuck the leg out. Their goalkeeper was, was in outstanding form as well on the day, he had a couple of great saves and it wasn't just one here and one there, it was kind of two and three in a row. Uh, so we, we were kind of getting a bit frustrated, I think, with ourselves. Back now with Kelly. Easily dealt with by Smith. Here United just packing the men around the box. Dean Shields, oh, that's a terrific save by Kevin Cuthbert. A moment of real class by Dean Shields, but matched by the save of the United keeper, this was heading for the top corner. And Kevin Cuthbert once more. There's a difference between Kilmarnock and the opening goal is for Scali, and Cuthbert's there again. Heroic strong there, United's goalkeeper. This is tremendous stuff, this is what cup dreams are made of. Is there a cup fairy tale to be told that are happening today? Dean Shields of the corner once more. Returned by Hay, easy for Cuthbert this time. The game was mental torture. It just felt as if we were never going to get that breakthrough. We were never going to find the goal. And you know, if we were getting past our defence, our goalie was saving it, or if we weren't, you know, the guys blocking shots, and you know, it was an unbelievable effort from here. Gary Hay opens up for him. Oh! Shot what a save once more from Kevin Cuthbert. Well, he's kept out absolutely everything that's been thrown at him this afternoon. We just kept trying to encourage each other, even though the fatigue was setting in, and because it's a lot harder for a team to try and score a goal than it is for a team to, to not concede. And at the end of full time, with extra time looming. It's Air United nil, come on it nil. Despite having the vast majority of the possession and a virtual monopoly on the chances, Kilmarnock were still level. The manager still believed the goal would come, even if some of his players' thoughts had fast-forwarded to a penalty shootout. They never looked. The trouble is at all. But as I say, we just couldn't break them down. So I think the manager's message was just keep on going. So he was kind of edging, edging towards penalties, and you do start to think, oh. It's a lottery when it goes to penalties and we're just trying to get ourselves over the line. A lot of boys are thinking like it's looking that way now. Because to be fair to Air, you know, they did held out, they their game plan almost worked. I thought prepare yourself for penalties, Cammy, because I mean it, it could go down to it and you've not had a lot to do. Everyone would fancy the other goalie because you've you've not done much in this game. That was one thing I wasn't gonna mention. We had prepared for it in the week the penalties, but we certainly made sure that we didn't mention that at 90 minutes because that would have planted a seed in the player's head. So we just says, look lads, you've got 30 minutes to get a goal because it doesn't look as if they're going to come out. 
Heffernan for Rocky. David Silva up against Eddie Malone. This could be a chance for Kilmarnock. It's David Silva! Just a yard or so wide of the far post. <laughs> Tiffany stands up to it once more. Right for Gary He. It's a dangerous ball, well away. Rocky now goes for the delicate chip, just too high from Rocky. We've seen him score a couple like that this season already. I was cramping up everywhere, to be fair, and I think it was Jimmy Nacko asked me how I was, and I just, I could barely move. I could barely move, and it, it, you know, it wasn't fair to try and stay out there for my own selfish reasons or whatever, you know, it was better for the team to to say that rather than try and hide it, so I went off. Off will go, Gary Hay to be replaced by Danny Bush. So sitting in the bench, and I just, I think, remember, we'd attacked. Effort in time to turn. Is this the moment? Here's Ben Gordon in field. For Shields, great save, Kevin Cuthbert again! Was it a follow-up by Shields? At last! The breakthrough comes for Kilmarnock! I remember uh, running away after I scored, and I remember how tired I was as as Danny Bus um, was jumping on top of me. Uh, I remembered I didn't have time to run anywhere or have the energy. I just wanted to try and get back in and, and, and see it out. like it would never come but Kevin Cuthbert couldn't keep them out forever but Dean Shields buries it beyond them and Kilmarnock are on course for a return to Hamden The clock seemed to be going very, very quick, and then when we scored, you're looking at it and it's going very, very slow, you know, um, waiting for the final whistle. But um, as I said, it was that was the overriding feeling at that day, it was just relief to, to get through and, and to get into the final. And the final whistle sounds. Kilmarnock on the team who will be back here at Hampden to contest the Scottish Communities League Cup final. Pete Shields, the man who finally got the breakthrough. The Kilmarnock fans, the ones who celebrate. It was nail biting at times for Kenny Shields and his men. But eventually they found the breakthrough. And it's the Rugby Park faithful who will be returning to the National Stadium for their first League Cup final in five years. The way, like, I think we won that match was even even better because uh, maybe they, from a fine point of view, no? Because uh, uh, as a derby, you want to, to them to feel the, the worst. So having, like, considered a goal, maybe three minutes to go in the second uh, extra time. It was even better than winning maybe 6-0. We've got into the final and that was the most important thing for, for the supporters and it made them feel happy and when I looked up to the stand afterwards I was delighted for those supporters and the players, the pressure was off and now we could prepare for a cup final.